Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today we are discussing about stroke or brain attack. Okay, so stroke is defined as acute cerebrovascular accident. It's an abrupt onset of neurological deficit that is attributable to focal vascular cause. Okay, whenever there is a blood uh, in blood supply interruption to the brain, it is called a stroke. Okay, there are two major different types of stroke. One is ischemic stroke, and another one is hemorrhagic stroke. Eighty-five percent of the all the strokes are due to ischemic stroke. Fifteen percent are due to hemorrhagic stroke. Again, ischemic stroke there are two types: embolic stroke. Seventy-five percent of the all ischemic strokes are due to embolism, and another one is thrombotic stroke. Okay, so the the major types of strokes are ischemic stroke and hemorrhagic stroke. Okay, now we will see what are the differential diagnoses for stroke first itself. Syncope can present like stroke. Syncope is sudden onset of uh, weakness, patient falls down. Immediately after falling down, patient regains consciousness and patient will, will be fully, full, fully normal after the uh, regaining of consciousness. So, syncope can present like stroke. Hypoglycemia can present with uh, stroke like features. Migraine can present like uh, stroke. Uh, features, focal seizures, after fo focal seizures uh, or uh, complete seizures, patient can come with uh, paralysis of one part of the body, this is called as Todd's paralysis. Demyelinating disorders like GBS can present like stroke, but it is a slightly progressive disorder. Acute encephalitis disease also can present like stroke. In that most important thing is hypoglycemic symptom. Okay. So, hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia can present with acute loss of consciousness, but hypoglycemia is very, very important. Okay. Now, you take the ischemic stroke. In the ischemic stroke, you have thrombotic stroke. Okay. What is thrombus? Thrombus is a platelet rich plague which is formed in the blood vessel, any major artery, it ruptures from the major artery like internal carotid artery and it goes to the uh, 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 major supply of the brain, arteries of the brain and produces thromboembolism. <coughs> okay. Large thrombus formed in the major circulation and ruptures and go to the uh, various parts of the brain and blocks, produces block there. Okay. Otherwise, the thrombus can propagate. The size of the thrombus can suddenly increase and block the arteries. That also can produce uh, thrombosis in the arteries. Okay. Very rarely, severe hypotension, hypoperfusion, uh, like uh, somebody develops cardiac arrest, can lead to border zone infarction or watershed infarction in the vascular territories. Okay. So, the major cause for a thrombotic uh, stroke is dyslipidemia, diabetes, all these things, hypertension, all these things. Okay. Now, the second important cause in ischemic stroke is embolic stroke. We all know that embolism normally, uh, normally it is uh, originating from the heart. Okay. Like a left atrial thrombus or left ventricular thrombus, like a patient is having atrial fibrillation or left ventricular uh, regional wall motion abnormality, thrombus will be formed in the heart. Whenever there is an arrhythmia, suddenly this thrombus can dislodge from the heart and go to the system circulation, it may go to the carotid arteries and it may go to the uh, cerebral circulation and it can produce uh, block there. Okay. Cardiac causes mainly it is due to atrial fibrillation. Acute myocardial infarction can present with uh, stroke, prosthetic valve, infective endocarditis, mural thrombi in the left ventricle or left atrium, dilated cardiomyopathy, all these things can present with acute stroke. So, this is embolic stroke. Okay. The major difference between a uh, thrombotic stroke and embolic stroke is thromb thrombotic stroke normally takes some time to develop complete weakness but embolic stroke present all of a sudden suddenly the embolism goes and blocks the major artery patient present with severe weakness all of a sudden same like that the recovery also slow in thromb thrombotic stroke recovery is fast in embolic stroke okay now we'll discuss about hemorrhagic stroke bleed in the brain. It can be intracerebral bleed or subarachnoid hemorrhage. Intracerebral bleed is mainly due to hypertension. 80 percent of the intracerebral bleeds are due to uh, rupture of small perforating artery because of high BP. AV malformation can be there, bleeding disorders can be there, platelet dysfunction can be there, autoimmune disease can be there. But major cause for intracerebral bleed is always hypertension. Okay. Subarachnoid hemorrhage is mainly due to aneurysm rupture, that is 50 percent of the SIH is due to aneurysm ruptures. AV malformation can produce uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage, bleeding disorders and trauma is another important cause for subarachnoid hemorrhage. Okay. Uh, 
uh, IC, in, when you consider the ICH, the common site of ICH is always, remember, putamen is the most common site, putamen is seen in, within the basal ganglia. Other areas are thalamus, caudate nucleus and pons. Okay. Then anterior circulation, mainly the bleeds are uh, common sites for aneurysm. Anterior circulation, it is mainly anterior communicating artery at the bifurcation of MCA uh, or, at the, uh, or at the origin of ICA, origin of PCA. Uh, all these areas you can get uh, aneurysm bleeds, anterior communicating artery and at the uh, bifurcation of MCS are the two major sites. Okay. In posterior circulation, aneurysm, aneurysms are very common at the apex of basilar artery, at the origin of pie, uh, pie, pica uh, and uh, superior cerebellar arteries from basilar artery origin also you can get uh, aneurysms. Okay. So, that is a major site for uh, bleeds in the brain. Okay, now we will see what are the clinical features according to the territory involvement. Okay, suppose you have a uh, stroke which is originating from the carotid artery or the branches of carotid artery like supply of carotid artery like major uh, uh, middle cerebral artery. You can have same side monocular blindness. One side monocular blindness is the one of the classical feature. But the major finding is always opposite side patient have hemiparesis that is because your pyramidal tract starts from the cortex there the pyramidal tract fiber starts and it comes down to your uh, internal capsule from there pyramidal tract comes down in the lower medulla it crosses to the opposite side so whenever there is a problem in the right side uh, of your uh, cortex the patient will have a left sided weakness Whereas the problem is in the internal capsule, the patient will have opposite side dense weakness. Okay. So, the origin of the internal, uh, pyramidal tract starts from the cortex, it is condensed in the uh, uh, internal capsule, comes down in the lower medulla, it crosses to opposite side. Till then, if the patient is having a lesion there, opposite side weakness is very classical. But if the lesion is in the brain stem, somewhere in the brain stem, the same side he can have uh, weakness of the cranial nerve like uh, uh, you can have uh, midbrain lesions, you can have the third, fourth, uh, fifth cranial nerve involvement on the same side. Uh, pons you can have sixth and seventh cranial nerve involvement. Uh, medulla you have ninth and tenth cranial nerve involvement. One side cranial nerve involvement, opposite side weakness that is called as cross hemiplegia. Okay. Whereas, you ha if suppose you, uh, patient is having vertebral basilar territory stroke, he can have features like ataxia, dysarthria, vertigo, tinnitus, diplopia, nystagmus, uh, difficulty in swallowing, uh, element facial palsy, Horner syndrome and drop attacks like sudden BP fall, all these things are common in vertebral basilar insufficiency. Okay. Now, we will see what are the hemorrhagic uh, like uh, features of hemorrhagic stroke. With the, uh, uh, most of these patients present sudden onset of severe headache and vomiting, seizures, papilledema, papilledema and loss of consciousness. Many patients with subarachnoid hemorrhage can have neck stiffness because blood is an irritant in CSF. Okay. And uh, you, you can have many patients who is having uh, severe stroke with brain edema, their cranial nerve may be involved, second, third, fourth, fifth cranial nerve can be involved because of the aneurysm enlargement and compression okay and pro, uh, if you take the prognosis uh, like uh, somebody is having an embolic stroke has got a better prognosis than uh, an ischemic stroke uh, but uh, hemorrhagic stroke we cannot predict depending on the time of treatment patient recovers fully sometimes if there even if there is a large hematoma if the patient receives fast treatment patient recovers fully okay so prognosis is very difficult to predict in the early phase of the stroke Okay. Now, whenever the patient come to emergency room, uh, the patient will be having acute onset of one side weakness. You take the patient inside and uh, take care is airway, breathing, circulation. Talk to the patient, make sure that patient is talking properly. Okay. And his saturation is good. His BP is good. BP should not be very high or very low. Okay. Very high BP may be either due to an hemorrhagic stroke or due to uh, somebody is having a stroke in the brain. To maintain the cerebral perfusion pressure, body will try to increase BP little higher. Okay. 
same like that if the patient is having hypotension that is also very bad for a patient who is having stroke okay so take care is airway breathing circulation the first investigation should be done in emergency room is blood sugar okay any patient coming to emergency room should be done a uh, capillary glucose uh, on the spot hypoglycemia can mimic like stroke okay uh, hypoglycemia can mimic uh, any type of stroke you can have hemiparesis hemiplegia monoparesis all types of strokes are common in uh, hypoglycemia basic electrolytes you can do prothrombin time and aptt pt and inr aptt can be done uh, whether patient has got any bleeding tendencies other investigation depending on the uh, previous uh, like history of disease you can do okay so the main investigation should be blood sugar testing prothrombin type and APTT. These are the main investigations should be done. Okay. Once the patient is stabilized in emergency room, immediately you have to send the patient for a CT scan. You have to do a non-contrast CT scan. Okay. Non-contrast CT scan in acute stroke can pick up hemorrhages. Remember, non-contrast CT is most important investigation from emergency room in an acute stroke. It can pick up acute hemorrhages. It may not pick up an acute ischemic stroke, but even then it can pick up hemorrhagic stroke okay some patients uh, may require mri uh, that is mainly if there is a posterior circulation stroke if you want to make out whether stroke is uh, present or not mri may be useful but uh, con non contrast ct is the best investigation to be done in emergency room it will rule out bleed in the brain okay that is very important for the treatment plan okay so other investigation like if the patient comes after the uh, like 6 hours 7 hours then you can ask for an mri you can uh, complete you can do a complete study of brain parenchyma by an mri which can uh, which can be done and you can ask for a dsa digital subtract and angiography can be done to know whether the patient has got any uh, occlusion stenosis dissection aneurysm all these things can be picked up by a digital subtract subtraction angiography okay then you can do a carotid doppler study uh, to know whether patient has got any carotid stenosis do an echocardiography because uh, some embolic stroke echo may show uh, mural thrombus or uh, like uh, valvular lesions you have to do an ecg to rule out arrhythmias okay once the patient is stabilized you have to control the sugar with insulin okay if the sugars are very high control the sugar with insulin if there is hypoglycemia treat with intravenous glucose try to keep the blood sugar somewhere around 140 to 180 milligram per deciliter okay now we'll discuss about the bp management in ischemic stroke okay uh, bp uh, whenever there is a ischemic stroke uh, brain is not getting adequate blood okay how to uh, perfuse that area body will try to increase the systemic bp and increase the uh, cerebral perfusion pressure so most of the patients who is having ischemic stroke will have slightly higher bp never try to reduce it drastically because it may produce uh, reduction in the cerebral perfusion pressure and it may it, it can even damage the ischemic penumbra okay so target bp should be systolic bp should be less than 185 millimeter of mercury and diastolic bp should be less than 110 millimeter of mercury okay this can be atten att uh, att attained by uh, a drug called as labetalol you should uh, start labetalol 10 milligram every 10 minutes and uh, you can titrate and maintain the dose uh, uh, maintain an in infusion 2 milligram per minute so labetalol is the ideal drug to be started to control the bp you should target a systolic bp of less than 185 a diastolic bp of less than 110 okay and you can even check the mean arterial pressure it should be less than 130 millimeter of mercury that is a current recommendation mean arterial pressure should be less than 130 millimeter of mercury but in hemorrhagic stroke strategy strategy is slightly different uh, if the systolic bp is 150 to 200 you have to reduce the systolic bp to uh, to 140 milligram it's slightly higher than the uh, ischemic stroke if the systolic bp is more than 220 you have to reduce to 140 to 160 and again uh, you have to attain a mean arterial pressure less than 130 millimeter of mercury you can use the same drug labetalol should be started as uh, 10 milligram every 10 minutes and then infusion 2 milligram per minute okay so labetalol is a drug of choice both in uh, hemorrhagic and uh, ischemic stroke okay now 
nimodopin is one another drug which should be used in subarachnoid uh, hemorrhage okay nimodopin dose is 60 mg fourth hourly it can reduce the vasospasm in subarachnoid hemorrhage okay so uh, nimodopin should be started in all patients with subarachnoid hemorrhage once the patient is stabilized in emergency room immediate uh, and you do a ct scan rule out bleed you can go for iv tissue plasminogen activator uh, it can lyse the clot okay door to needle time should be less than 60 minutes so you get a stroke case within 60 minutes you have to thrombolyze the patient okay so ct within 20 minutes rule out bleed uh, take the patient for thrombolysis the dose of tissue plasminogen activator is 0.9 mg per kg body weight intravenously maximum 90 mg iv as 10% total dose by bolus uh, for 1 to 2 minutes followed by remainder dose uh, remaining dose over total 1 hour okay so tissue plasminogen and uh, plasminogen activator is a thrombolytic agent should be given less than 60 minutes we'll see what are the major indications for tpa age should be more than 18 years clinical diagnosis of ischemic stroke is required onset of symptoms less than 4.0 hours you do a non contrast ct and rule out hemorrhage these are the major indications for uh, uh, tpa okay now if the patient is having a massive stroke there is a high chance of raised icp you can control the raised icp transiently by doing some measures in emergency room you can elevate the head to 30 degrees hyperventilation with a with the help of a ventilator can be done and uh, goal of pa co2 should be more than 30 to 35 mg uh, uh, mercury can be uh, done by a ventilator uh, uh, like uh, with the help of ventilation ven mechanical ventilator then you have to give manitol manitol should be given uh, 100 ml over 10 minutes should be given very fast manitol manitol should be given very fast if you give very slowly it will not act as a uh, uh, it will not act in the brain okay so manitol should be given as a bolus 100 mg give start okay then 3% saline can also reduce the uh, raised icp try to get a uh, uh, sodium level 145 to 155 milli equivalents per liter okay and you should be sedate the patient completely if there is a raised icp with uh, drugs like proper propofol okay so these are the management for raised icp so we have discussed about acute management of stroke in emergency room take the patient inside make sure that his airway breathing circulation is properly uh, maintained uh, do a uh, grbs like glucometer and rule out hypoglycemia take non contrast ct scan rule out bleed if there is no bleed you can uh, give uh, you can give uh, uh, thrombolytic agent for this patient thank you subscribe to atc emergency medicine press the bell icon to follow us